There's a lot of entrepreneurs that message me and say, Pat, one day I'm running a billion dollar company. And I'll send a message back and say, how? And they say, that's why I need your help to build a million dollar company. You see, saying that statement, it's, it's, it's exciting because you know, it's very similar. When we're excited, we're inspired, we watch a video, we watch a movie, maybe a documentary, say, I'm gonna be the next Steve, I'm gonna be the next this, I'm gonna be the next Elon, I'm gonna build a billion dollar company. Then comes the how to, the logic later, then we're stuck and then we give up. It's like, it's important, you need the emotion. It's like when you fall in love with a girl and he's, I love you so much, I think this is great. And that emotion leads to sex and then you have a baby. Then you say, how do I raise this kid? Well, that's the real work, same exact principle. I'm gonna be a billion dollar company. How am I gonna build this company up? So that's one thing to keep in mind. There's nothing wrong with that. We need more inspiration, more motivation. But today I'm gonna give you a little bit of logic to be thinking about, first of all, before I build a billion dollar company, I gotta build a million dollar business. And, and, and how do I get to a million dollar business? How do I get to 10 million? And how many companies are there that are really doing this and how do they think? I, I, I can tell you for myself, I went from starting a company and from scratch, nothing, 100% my savings, didn't get a loan from anybody, didn't go raise capital, nothing, 100%. All my savings was put into it. Uh, every single penny I had was put into the business. And we took that from there now to, you know, we're getting offers of $100 million for the company. And I went from zero to 100 million in seven years. And so I'm gonna talk about some of those principles for you to be thinking about. Then at the same time, I want you to be seeing uh, this here on how many billion dollar companies are out there. So here's what it is. There are 30 million companies uh, in America that are registered in America, 30 million, dollar, 30 million companies. 96% of them gross less than a million a year. Keep that in mind, 96% of them do less than a million dollars per year. Only 4% do more than a million dollars per year. That's 1.2 million companies do a uh, million dollar a year or more in revenues. 0.4%, which is 120,000 companies, do more than 10 million. Out of 30 million, only 120,000 do over uh, $10 million a year in revenues. Let me explain to you what that means. Out of all the people in America, to make six figures, you're in the 20 percentile. 20% of Americans' household make a six-figure income. Now, the one percent number, everybody, I want to be a one percenter. One percenter is shy of $400,000 a year income. We're talking about 0.4% of companies do $10 million or more per year. Then 0 .0006, .0006, that's 18,000 companies do more than 50 million. This is like a prime, you're here, you're good. You get over 10 million, you have respect now from peers. 50 million, there's only 18,000. If you wanna to get to 0.0009%, 2,500 companies do more than $500 million of revenue per year. And then you have the ultimate Fortune 500 companies. That's 0.0002%. You're doing more than five billion per year, and this is the top ten currently right now of uh, Fortune 500 companies. Number ten is AT&T, then it's Ford, then GM, then CVS Health, the United Healthcare Group, then then uh, uh, McKeeson, then Berkshire Hathaway, then it's Apple, then it's Exxon, then Walmart. Number one in America, 2.2 million employees in the world. I think 1.6 million in America is what they have. So now. What is, it, what is the biggest difference between these guys and these guys? The majority is under a million. How do I even get to a million dollar business? What's the difference? What's the difference between these guys? Because that's 4%, that's 0.4%. What is that? That's what we're gonna talk about. So first things first. When I had a group of these entrepreneurs that flew in a couple weeks ago from all over the world, they came from all over the world, they won the contest for us getting to 100,000 subs. And I'm, you know, most likely when we get to a quarter million subs, we'll put the same contest again for people to fly in and we'll do the same structure, maybe at a different place. But we went for hours after hours dissecting businesses and the first question I asked all the entrepreneurs was the one thing that most people don't have in mind. The first question I asked, I said, I need you to tell me clearly what your vision is with your business. What is your vision with your business? Because in reality, most of them, 96 percenters, don't have any idea what they're doing. They don't even know why they started a business. It's generally just pure excitement, enthusiasm, I hate my boss, I hate my job, I don't ever wanna work for anybody else, I wanna start a business. That's pretty much how it starts, right? But if you wanna to get to the higher level and build a billion dollar company or something that maybe one day will be valued at a billion dollar company, you need to be very clear about what you want. What is your vision? What is your long-term vision? What are we doing? What are we doing five years from now? What are we doing 10 years from now? What do you wanna be? Who do you wanna be? Where do you wanna be? Is it clear to you? 
Do you know exactly where you're going? Do you know exactly what you want to do? I did a video last week and it was called The Biggest Mistake Marketers Make. And in this video, The Biggest Mistake Marketers Make, I explain how everybody wants everybody to be their customers. They want to appeal to every single person. If you haven't watched it, you got to watch this video. But the ones that do very well, they understand exactly what clear vision they have, who's their customer, and they stay in that lane the entire time. So the first thing I will tell you to build a big company is you got to have a vision. I remember the night when we had a meeting, September 23rd, everybody talks about it all the time, and I pulled in the agents, and I told them, we are starting a new company. This is the first thing I told everybody that night. Till today, everyone talks, I got up and I said, there's a 90% chance we're going out of business within six months. That was my opening line. There, this is recorded. There's a 90% chance we're going out of business. My wife is standing in the back. We've just been married for three months. My father's telling me, don't do it. I said, I'm putting every single dime I've ever worked for and saved into this deal. 100% of it. Because I'm crystal clear of the vision of what we're going to be doing. I don't know what it is, but this is very crystal clear. Here's what we got to do. This is what the industry needs. This is what we're going to be doing. And I cast it the vision. And you can cast the vision and try to motivate, but if it ain't clear, everyone knows it. This was a very clear vision. And we had some that didn't want to take up. And I told him, I said, if you don't want to do anything like this, I fully understand it because we're going to have a lot of problems the first year, two years. And if you can't handle that, go with a bigger company. If you do want to go with us, mark my word, every day, every night, we're going to bust our tail till this thing becomes a reality. There's a certain sense of vision and clarity. The bigger the business is being built, there's something that's deeper than just uh, uh, let's build a business together. Number two is patience. You've got to have patience. But not, not patience because there's two different types of patience that are sold to people. There's one patience like, listen, be patient. Everything's going to be okay. Be patient. Everything's going to be okay. Be patient. You're young. Just be patient. Just be patient. I, I don't believe in that. Here's why. My father, who raised me and I would give him credit into helping me become a leader, there's a lot of great men in my life that have impacted me, many of them. And one day I'll do a video and I'll tell, list them. My father's at the top of this, but I'll list these men, not in any order, how they impacted me. But my father was always the opposite. My father wasn't saying, be patient, be patient. My father was, you're going to be 65 years old tomorrow. What are you doing? How many times do you need to go to the nightclub? Let's go already. I'm like, Dad, leave me alone, man. I'm 22 years old. I'm 21 years old. I got to live it up. How many more girls you want, Pat? How many? How many more girls do you need? I mean, what do you need to feed your appetite already? Dad, what is wrong with you, right? There is that part where people say, just be patient. My dad was not that. My dad would say, let's go. What are we waiting for? Let's go. Let's go. And by the way, he was like that since I was a kid. He'd wake me up in the morning with water spray on my face. Let's go wake up. And he was never in the military. Wake up. I'm like, Dad, I want to sleep five more minutes. Oh, really? No problem. I know what that meant. He would go, bring the spray. No hesitation. Psst, psst, psst. He would wake me up. I said, that's abusive. He taught me to be aggressively patient. There's a big difference between patience and aggressively patient. What's patience? Man, it's going to be okay. Just relax. Oh, it's going to be, I'm just going to go home and have a bad day today because I'm going to be patient. Oh, it's all good, man. Tomorrow, it's another day. It's another day. It's another day. You know how many times can you say it's another day till you're 80 years old? That's about 18,000 times. I don't know how many days it is. However many times. Eventually, you're 68 years old. What, another day? It's another day? It's another day? It ain't another day. No, no. It's another day. Once I come home, I'm so tired. I don't even make it to my bed. I sleep on the floor. Yes, you can be patient. That's aggressively patient. So not just be patient, be aggressively patient. Number three, adapting and adjusting. Here's why. Uh, on this list, I wanted to put product. I didn't put product on there. Here's why I didn't put product. There's a lot of companies that don't have the best products in the world that are multi-billion dollar companies that we use regularly. They don't have the best product. How do they do it? It's adapting. It's adjusting. It's seeing what the market demands today. It's seeing what's needed five years from now. It's knowing as a quarterback, you're playing, all of a sudden you notice it's third down and three, and you know they know what they're calling. They're going to call a blitz. And you notice the two linebackers step up. Maybe corners came in a little bit. Safety backed up. You look at one of your guys, and you say, hey, I'm calling an audible. You change it up. Fullback comes to the back. You go to the back. You go, boom, this way. Next thing you know, this guy opens up. Boom, he runs. You throw it. You got a touch, and you have to call an audible because you caught something. You read something, right? You're looking at everything that's moving. Same exact energy you got to have if you want to build a bigger uh, billion dollar company or even a hundred million dollar company. You got to have that eye set to know you got to adapt and you got to adjust. Point number four, stick into your philosophy. Stick into your philosophy. Listen, everyone says the greatest college basketball coach of all time is John Wooden. 
It took him 29 years to win a championship after coaching for 29 years without winning a single thing. Then he won, what is it, 11, he won. 29 years he was just an average coach. Let me say that one more time. 29 years he's just an average coach. 29 years. Then he's John Wooden. I was there the night he passed away at Ronald Reagan Hospital. His pastor is a good friend of mine, Dudley Rutherford. We were there when he passed away at the Ronald Reagan, 99 years old. Everybody's coming in to visit this guy. He was, he was everyone's father figure, man. People love this guy. 29 years he was just a regular coach until he became a champion at 29, 30 years of coaching. Then he's considered the greatest. But for 29 years he was a nobody. Why? What happened? He stuck to his philosophy. By the way, his philosophy is completely different than others. No cursing. No, it's just there is no cursing with him. He is not about the best player type of guy. He's about the team and give me your best. I want you to try your hustle, rebound, all this stuff. He had very basic principles. Improve. Beat your prior best. Focus on hiking and improve. I need you to play defense. I need you to hustle pack. I need you to give the best screen. I need you to be a good teammate. I need you to be a good man. I need you to focus on your character. I need you to focus. That was his philosophy. Now the coach like, what are you talking about? And then he got a coach like Jimmy Johnson, Dallas Cowboys. And before Dallas Cowboys, he was coaching, was it Miami Hurricanes? That's who he was? You know what kind of players he liked? Here's who Jimmy Johnson liked. He liked tough guys. Give me Michael Irvin troublemakers. Give me crazy cursing ladies, and Jimmy had a reputation as well. All the, give me those guys, that's who I want. Give me a Leon Lett, give me a Michael Irvin, give me a Emmett Smith, give me some crazy players, and let's go to war against the enemy. And he won championships. And it hasn't happened since him, even though people say, well, Spitzer brought him a champion. Yeah, it's really not him. It was really him. And Spitzer was a good coach as well in college when he had different people he was doing. What is the point? Stick to your philosophy. You got a philosophy, you stick to it. The more you change your philosophy in your business and your company, you're not giving it enough timeline to create momentum. Philosophies need time to create momentum. Constant change of philosophies, then you're ruining your long-term possibilities of having high returns on your business. Number five, leadership. You know, you know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? I want you to think about this. I went on YouTube about a year ago, year and a half ago, and I typed in the word leader. And then Mario and I did it again just recently. I said, guys, look how insane this is. Look how insane this is. Go on YouTube and type in the word leader or leadership. There is no one even cares to want to study leadership online. We did videos and we put title leaders or how to be a great leader and all this stuff. It would always be, ah, oh, it's just people wouldn't click on it because the title's not attractive. It's like, ah, whatever. I, don't want, I know what it is to be a leader. Set an example and know all this other stuff. Listen, let me tell you. I did a meeting at Ohika Castle this past week. We rented the entire place. It's a $150 million property. Gary owns it, very classy man. We rented out the entire place, 32 rooms, and I brought 60 people in there with their spouses. Total 60 people. We had dinner, food, all this stuff we did. And one of the nights while we're there, I said, look, there are a lot of great speakers from stage. There are a lot of people that do a very good job speaking from stage. But you don't build big companies because of how great you speak from stage. You build big companies because how great you are behind closed doors. That's how you build a big company. When you say, you know what? John, in my office, let's talk. What's your problem? What's going on? What's bothering you? You're not the same. What is going on? Did I do something? We need to talk about it. What's up? I don't like your behavior, man. This is affecting other people. And I heard you're talking negatively about somebody. You okay? I don't remember you being like this. Oh, Pat, you just, that's leadership. And, and if, if you think this is just being on a cover of a magazine and I'm going to be cool and I'm going to be a celebrity and my cousins and my guys that we went to school and I'm going to be Mr. Cool, you for completely <laughs> have, have completely uh, 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 confused the concept of building a big established company because it has nothing to do with you. It has all to do with the team you're building. And if you don't know how to lead a team, you're not going to recruit the right talent. You're not going to keep the right talent. You're not going to you know, drive the right talent. You're not going to know how to push the people, competition, overcoming enemies, lawsuits, chat. This is all leadership. Negotiate. It's all leadership. It's all leadership. So whoever, you better believe Steve Jobs was a great leader, eventually. Maybe it's all the first time he was. I still think even though he was at that time because he was chippy, he just wanted it so bad and nobody understood him. You know, it's like a younger Tony La Russa for some of you guys that follow sports, right? Next, number six. Marketing and positioning. I'm going to do a video on positioning to explain positioning a little bit more because I don't want to take that's a whole episode by itself. Marketing and positioning. It's a little bit on what I talked about in the last episode when I said uh, biggest mistake marketers make. Well, who do you want to be? Market yourself and position yourself and stay there. 
How are you going to market yourself? You know, Apple was very big on how they marketed themselves. Think different. This is who we are. We are not like everybody else. But man, your computer keeps giving problems. It doesn't matter. We're different. I'm telling you, your computer gives problems. We're different. It sucks. We're different. Eventually, guess what we bought? We're different. And now they're the third, I think, biggest company in America because we finally bought the fact that Apple is simply different. They market different. They launch different. They position different. Their computers were $3,000 and you can buy a $1,000 computer. Guess what they said? I don't care. Don't buy our computer. And what do we do? We bought their computer. I don't care. I'm not going to put Microsoft Word and all this stuff on here. Don't buy our computer. We still bought it. I don't care. I'm not putting Flash in our computer. We still bought it. We still bought it because it's positioning and marketing. Next is discipline. Seven discipline. So what's discipline? Discipline is uh, personal discipline, personal life discipline. Um, your financial discipline, how you handle your money discipline, when you buy the bigger items for yourself discipline. I remember first thing I told uh, my wife when we started a company, I said, for five years we're not buying a house. Babe, what are you talking about? I said, five years, I don't even wanna talk about buying a house. Zero, nothing. We have money, we're not buying a house. 100% of the business. That took discipline, it wasn't easy because we could afford to buy a house, but it's discipline, five years. We said all money into the business, discipline. Discipline is coming in, working after a big victory. You had something great happen. You want to say, oh man, I am King Kong. You got to come in and be disciplined. That's what the, discipline is every day coming to work. I can't tell you how many people just say, well, you know, I don't come to work anymore. I work from home. Really? You, you, you think they, if you want to be a four hour work week, all good. That's your MO, all good. But I don't know who you want to be. I'm talking to people that want to build some companies. And by the way, Pat, Pat, have you ever ran a I've never ran a billion dollar company. You know, I was part of a billion dollar company, but I started a company and we took it to 100 million. And that's what we've done. Valuation at around 100 million dollars. But hey, what's the go? I'm talking to people that want to be on this conversation here. Some of you guys could be a 15 year old guy watching the studies, you know, religiously all these value videos. Seven years from now, you could build the next billion dollar company. You, you, I'm talking to you, not the other guy, to you. To you, I'm who I'm talking about. That's who I'm talking to. I'm not talking to the four hour work week audience. The four hour work week audience, there's plenty of YouTube guys for you. I'm not the guy for four hour work week audience. When I say entrepreneur, to me, entrepreneur is somebody that starts a business with employees and there's a product involved that we're selling. The product is not a book or a video on YouTube for me to make money with. No, there's a real legitimate business that we're running. Real legitimate business that we're running is what I'm talking about. Okay. All right. So that was discipline. Eight, opportunistic. You got to be opportunistic. You know, certain things will come up. What is opportunistic? Look at industries that have problems. Don't be like everybody else and follow the curve. You know, I got involved in an industry that nobody wanted to touch. You know, when I would tell my friends, I said, hey, what are you going to be doing? My friend would say, I'm starting a startup that's for online dating. I'm like, that's sexy. What are you doing? I'm starting a, you know, an online app is for nightclub. That was a very cool idea. I was, that was sexy. What are you doing? I'm starting an app, an online app for people. It's like Uber for dentists, and it's only $99. You don't need any health. So, oh man, that's a, that's a cool idea there. Okay, Pat, so what are you doing? I'm, I'm selling life insurance. I'm, I'm sorry, come again? What, what are you doing? I'm selling life insurance. And then all of a sudden, everybody disappears. See, but I love it. it drives people crazy, doesn't it? Like even right now, somebody goes, Pat, what do you sell? I chose to be part of the life insurance industry. Here's why. The industry needed help. Nobody was wanting to revolutionize this industry that's been doing business as usual for the last 40, 50 years. And we have disrupted the industry and we're okay with that. We were opportunistic. We saw an opportunity and we said, we're going to make a difference in this industry. It's benefited a lot of people. You got to figure out a way to be opportunistic. Next point, number nine, you need luck. There's luck involved, fully luck involved. A lot of people say, ah, oh, you know, what about we, you know, luck, all this other thing. There's luck. You gotta be at the right place, right time, you meet the right people, you bring them on board, you recruit them, they become an executive, they do well, they bring an investor, that comes and introduces you to a technology guy, another guy that's a great coder, who build the software for eBay that they bring on board, and next thing you know, you create this app, it speeds up everything, boom, it takes you from a $50 million company to a $3 billion company, you need some luck. Now all that stuff still needs aggressively patient, you're working, but there's luck involved in there. There's nothing wrong with getting lucky. And I'm going to say something here that, that may sound crazy. You know, when this year, okay, this year, this is going to be a crazy comment to make. Look at 2016, how strange it is. Chicago Cubs won the World Series. I mean, that's like, you know when's the last time Chicago Cubs won the World Series? 
The last time Chicago Cubs won the World Series, Alexander the Great was alive. I mean, you know, I mean, it's been 1,500 years. I'm being sarcastic, but you get the idea. You know who else won the championship this year? Cleveland Cavaliers. Do you know when's the last time the city of Cleveland won anything? A long time ago. Do you know what else happened this year? A guy named Donald Trump is a president. What the hell is going on in 2016? Very simple. You know what's going on in 2016? This is the year of the underdog. I don't know what's going on up there. The gods of success or the god, the man upstairs is watching saying, I'm going to shock everybody in America this year. Everyone in America is going to be shocked this year. If I told you beginning of the year, January 1st, guess what? This year, Cubs are winning the World Series. Cavs are winning the championship. Donald Trump's going to win the presidency. I tell you, I'm going to bet a million dollars. I bet a million. If I win, you give me a million. If I win, you give me $100. If you win, I give you a million dollars. Would you take that bet? You would take that. I would take that bet. We got Trump, Cubs, and Cavs. What happened? Sometimes, sometimes... When the gods of success want somebody to win and there's some magic destiny stuff, I believe that 100%. I really believe there's people watching down and they're saying, this person's been busting his or her tail without anybody seeing it. Guess what? He's a spring, here's a sprinkle of miracles happening. Put the right people around them and look what happens. And all of a sudden, everything you touch, gold, 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 gold. Man, this thing is so easy. No, no, no. You have favor is what you have. There's something that's going on. In 2016, there was a strange energy in the world. So you need a little bit of luck in business. Number 10, long-term thinking. You can't just be thinking right now, long-term. Billion dollar company, long-term. Billion dollar company, $100 million company, long-term. You want to build a $10 million company, long-term. You want to make a million a year, long-term. You can't just say, I'm going to be a million in six months. No, you can't. I'm going to be, not saying you cannot. It does happen. How about this guy, Pat, that guy on the magazine said he made a million dollars at six years old because he came out with this stuff. I get it. There's exceptions. Michael Jordan jumps 49 inches. I can go do calves and quads for the rest of my life. I'll be lucky if I can jump 24 inches. I'm not jumping 49 inches, okay? But the point I'm trying to make to you is this. If you think long term and you're constantly improving and adjusting, you eventually are going to have a shot at the big timers, big times, if you do your part, right? Number 11, lots of battle scars that you got to handle. Now, here's the difference between battle scars. Some will heal. Some are healing, some may never heal, okay? You need to know that about battle scars. When you go in the ring and you decide to go at it with some fighters, they're also pros. You're going to have somebody's going to punch you, boom, you got a scar and that one heals, right? Then you got one you're going to hit and boom, that one still takes a couple weeks to heal. And then sometimes you're going to get hit and you may broke, break a bone that forever that stays a little bit. You can heal, but it's got a little bit of thing that changes. In the world of business, you're going to have to slay a lot of dragons. In the world of business, you're going to have to face with some heavyweight battles. Maybe you're only middleweight going to a guy twice your size, and you've got to be able to hang with them. That's the big boy club, the big girl club. This is not the friendly word. The, the, the negotiation rooms up there are not, how are you? How are you doing? How's your family? How's your wife? How's your husband? How's your kids? No. How much money is this going to make us? That's the negotiation room. Things change a little bit. You've got to be able to hang in those rooms. And last but not least, Last but not least, and this is the confusing one for most people, here's last but not least, it cannot be about the money. Crazy, huh? It cannot be about the money. If it's about the money, you'll stop at some point, if it's about the money. If it's simply about, I'm going to build a billion dollar company, I'm going to put it in their face, you'll stop at some point. Then what? Then there's emptiness. What is it about? But it can't be about the money. I mean, I can't wait to be a millionaire, and then what? It's got to be about improving something. It's got to be about a vision. It's got to be about changing something. It's got to be about correcting an injustice. It's got to be about finding a way that's going to fill a need that another person is not doing as good as you are. It can't just be about the money. And I got two books to recommend you right now. When I saw Dennis writing on his hand, that pen was the marker for me. I got two books to recommend you uh, that I want you to read. One of them, one of them uh, is called, is by uh, Andy Grove. He was the former, he wasn't the founder of Intel, but this guy, he just passed away. And I've recommended this book in a couple of videos in the past before. You gotta read this book if you haven't read it. It's an older book. Some of the concept stories are older, but you gotta read it. It's called Only the Paranoid Survive. Only the Paranoid. The high, high, higher you go, you, the higher you go, you gotta be a little bit more paranoid. Only the Paranoid Survive. Because when you have success, 
sometimes you're so confident and you believe in yourself, then all of a sudden you're Mike Tyson facing Buster Douglas and oh my gosh, I just got knocked out. Okay, because everybody at that level is a pro for a reason. Right, when these, you, you see these best teams in the NBA, they typically lose to who? You know who they lose to? The worst teams. You know why? Because they came in like, we're gonna kill them. I'm gonna score 50 points tonight. Those guys that are the worst team, they're still better than everybody else who is not, you know, amateurs. They're the worst professionals, but they're still professionals. You're facing professionals. You need to be ready for it. So one is only the paranoid survive. The other one is called Competition by Michael Porter. Uh, it, it's about strategy. And I think it's called Strategy Execution, something like that, by Michael Porter that you got to read. He's a Harvard professor. Good content that he has because you need strategy, you need to be paranoid, and all of them will pretty much give you some concepts on what to do for you to build a company that maybe one day could be evaluated at a billion dollar company, which is kind of cool to be a part of that, but it can't be about the money. Dennis, let's get our pillow here. This pillow, I think this is the last year for this pillow, right? This pillow is going to retire this year. All right, here we go. This pillow is going to retire here in 2016, and we'll bring a new pillow. If you haven't subscribed to this channel because somebody shared this video with you, please do so. And if you're one of these people that watch these videos week after week and you haven't subscribed yet, come on, man. You got to subscribe to this channel. We got to get to a million subs, and we need your help. You know who you are. Take that mouse in your hand and go wiggle it all the way down to the subscribe button. Click on that and click to the alert button right next to it to be notified every time we do a video. And, uh, by the way, I love all your comments. Do comment. I read your comments. I don't know what time. I, so typically, it's 2 o'clock in the morning or 4 o'clock in the morning that I read the comments. But do post your comments, uh, questions you may have on the bottom uh, as well. And uh, uh, again, if you are watching this video on a completely different website and you want to come back to find this video, find other content, you can always come back to patrickbedebi.com. Boom, I haven't done this. It still works. Let me try one more time. Ah, it still works. It's, I, I thought it was broken for for a while. Apparently it still does work. Anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay, good.